Hello, my good Irish football fan TV. This is the starting 11 show of the big, huge, crucial game against Denmark on Monday evening. The team that are going to take us to the Euros, well, the team that are going to start us yeah. on getting to the Euros. Um, I'll let you take it away. Well, I, th I think it's, if, if we're going to pick the team we think Mick will pick, I think it's pretty straightforward. I don't think we're going to disagree too much. Dan Randolph, number one, super keeper. There's no doubt. If Dan Randolph is fit, he starts. He's in, he's in goal. Yeah, but I think, and um, we mentioned on the preview, how crucial <coughs> is having him back. Um, you know, since he's, I think it might have been the Germany game with Shane Long scored. I think since then he's got that jersey and he has not, you know, he's put up a fight all the time. To that. Yeah. Like he, he wants it all the time. I remember there was a period where O'Neill was trying to make him not play or something. He kind of came out and says, well, you know, I want yeah, it. He like, always wanted to play. He only came off the bench against Germany that time, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. So, yeah. But so uh, since that game, he, he, yeah. he got his chance, you know, and he's really taken it, I think. And... I think it just goes to show how dependable he was. The fact that he he had a bit of an injury scare, so, like so many people were worried. Oh, it was it was nerve wracking when I heard, and I was just delighted to see him start for Middlesbrough last weekend. Yeah, and look, he he he's as much as any of us want us to get to the Euros. Um, I can assure you that he he want, it's all he wants. Um, yeah. I was chatting to him. I trained the other night or the other day, sorry, and uh, you know. All we need is one big performance, you know. If we have Darren playing at the top of his game, we have a real good chance. Yeah. I mean, if we can keep it clean, when I, I keep saying our defence is our strong point, but mm -hmm. if we can keep a clean sheet, we're halfway there. We just need one goal then. Yeah. OK, well, I think that's that's fair enough on the goalkeeper front. Um, Matt Doherty right back, I think it's the obvious choice. Yeah, with Seamus Coleman suspended, it has to be Matt Doherty and yeah. it will be Matt Doherty. Yeah, well, he's, he's, he, I know he played against Aston Villa last week, they won 2-0. And uh, he's been slowly getting a run of games. And again, he had an injury scare, but thankfully he's okay. He's okay. Well, uh, Wolves have had so many matches as well. People forget Wolves are in the Europa League. Yeah. They've played far more games than any other side. So Matt is certainly battle hardened from this season. And yeah, so he's had plenty of game time without having played in every game. Yeah. I've no worries about Matt as right full back. Yeah. Yeah. I think the fact is that people were complaining and stuff like that. I think Matt Doherty could be the. the maybe missing pieces of the puzzle for this game. I think he might be the one that actually scares them going forward rather than the other way around. Yeah, well, he, he's, he certainly, he he normally plays as a wing-back and he, he likes to get forward. He, he's been involved in a lot of goals for Wolves, more, not just scoring them, but setting them up as well. Yeah. So he could well be the, yeah. The only problem I would say is that, or the only issue I would say is that uh, at Wolves he's got... Very good midfielders, top class midfielders, I would say, in Neves and Moutinho. Okay. Uh, others will argue that Hendrick and, and Howard Hinn aren't up to that type of uh, um, passing standards, I would say. Um, I think they're both very good. Uh, yeah, I don't I mean, think they're up to the level of the Neves and, and No, and no, they're not up they to, I think they're good. not up to that level. They're, they're, they're doing a fine job for us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I don't know, even yeah. if they will both start together, you never know what way that will go. But um, just in that regard, I think it's going to be crucial to how Matt plays with that midfield. I think it's going to be crucial to the way we play. And whoever's in front of him then as well, it's going to be crucial in terms of tracking back. Yeah, uh, We're going to need someone who's going to be up and down. Um, but I think that's the obvious choice at, at, at uh, right back, and another obvious choice at left back, and then the Stevens. Um, he's been absolutely outstanding this season for Sheffield United. People are saying his uh, performance for Ireland haven't been great. I don't think he's really done a whole lot wrong. No, he honest. hasn't done much wrong, and I don't think his place is even in question, really. Yeah. You know, and particularly not with Derek Williams being unavailable now. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that yeah. it would be either way. I think. No, I wouldn't have been. In fairness, End is the man in possession, and he's. He's going to start. He has to start. Yeah, yeah. I think as well. He, I thought he had a good game against Denmark away from home. I thought he was getting right into challenges and stuff like that. I thought I actually thought he had a really yeah. good game. People did go to the Switzerland game and say that and he didn't play well. That, but I thought he played particularly well in the Denmark game. It took him a while. A couple of uh, first fifteen, he was. He was. Yeah, I, I think it, you you touched on it on the other side. He, he does need support in front of him from people tracking back, and it yeah. is crucial in both the left and the right. Okay, we have a we have a good defence, but we need to work, and uh, whoever will come up to whoever plays on the left and the right in the attack, but they do need to work very hard and track yeah. back as well. 
Yeah, um, yeah. So I don't think we need to go into uh, that much on Ender. I mean, he won overseas Player of the Year at the PFA Awards last uh, last week. Play vote for voted for by the players. So you know, hats off to him. He's won that. Um, he'll be coming in on a high. Uh, yeah. He's Sheffield United are doing really well. They're playing well. They're up yeah. in the top six or seven in the table, and yeah. So it's for all of all our Irish lads there. It's uh, they're coming in on a high and. You know, in good form yeah and then to stay on Sheffield United obviously John Egan and then uh, Shane Duffy as a two it, centre back. it's a no brainer I mean I think, uh, is there anyone going to even disagree and I actually Kieran Clark is playing really well and he had a good game last night and he's playing regularly now for, for Newcastle but I don't think anyone's going to disagree it's Shane yeah. Duffy and John Egan are our centre back partnership for Monday night yeah I think that uh, as well is that Mick, Mick likes all four of the centre backs but he even said the fact that uh, Kyo uh, Kyo was doing so well that he was keeping Egan out of the team because he kind of inherited Kyo and Duffy as a partnership under O'Neill. Yeah. And then kind of, I suppose, kept the continuity there and kept, I suppose, we had it settled back for for a while. You know, the only difference now is Coleman's out uh, and Egan's coming in for Kyo, which I think from now on I'd probably be that back for. Uh, yeah, I, I think, look, I'd love to see Richard back, but it's it's going to be a long way back for him. I don't think he'll ever yeah. get back to yeah. the international. Probably, I don't think he'll ever get in the... Not. And I mean, John Egan has come in and he's he's taken the jersey and he's done really, really well. Yeah, he's and, adapted to the Premier yeah, League. I mean, it, Seamus Coleman, yeah, he's going to be a loss in Monday night, but Matt Doherty's playing so well as well. I, I don't think we're going to feel it as much. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, look, I mean, that's a solid back four. That's a Premier League back four. And uh, Duffy's getting back in now at Brighton. Uh, yeah. Started the last Scoring game. Scoring goals as well. Yeah. So we can't really uh, say too much on that, like, I'm happy with that back five, I suppose you could say, for including Darren and that. Um, really solid, and that's our foundation to build off uh, and then going going up from that then. Um, who I want is Josh Cullen. <laughs> Who's going to play? Glenn Whelan. Glenn Whelan, yeah. I see the logic in why Glenn Whelan plays, is the fact that he's experienced in these games and stuff like that, but... If we're getting overrun in midfield, is my only worry is that can Glenn keep up the pace with them for that long? Is where I think Josh would, but the thing, the game might be too much of a, of a, too much of a of a jump for Josh. I think early in his career, his first competitive cap. You know, I don't think that. Yeah, I, I don't think he's going to start. Mm. Um, I think Glenn Whelan will start. I, I said it before the George and Switzerland that I thought Josh should play at some point there that yeah. maybe Glenn wouldn't have been up to the two games but Mind you Glenn was brilliant against Switzerland he was and he and played and really I think well, he's had a really know. good campaign and he's getting abused all the time yeah. uh, <laughs> off people and, and I know I, I am a big fan and I'm self-confessed Glenn Whelan fan because I, and I keep saying he does all so much of the unseen work but uh, he has been a great servant for us he will he will start against Denmark if we get to the Euros he may not start in the Euros. Yeah. Which might be harsh, but... But this goes back yeah. to what we said in the preview about, you know, what happens between now, uh, regardless if we, if we win on Monday or if it goes to a playoff, is that there's a long road ahead of playing football if we do get to that stage uh, to, uh, to qualifying. Um, whereas players could come in and, and, and start doing well. I, I, I we said it in the preview, but... Like Cullen could be by that stage our number one sitting midfielder. Yeah, I mean, I think it's very easy for Paul and myself to sit here and pick the starting eleven against Denmark. Um, hopefully, we'll get to the Euros. Trying to pick the starting eleven for the fifteenth of June would be a very difficult task, I think, mm. and it could be very different to the one. And hopefully, we will get to test this. It would be very different, different to the one we that would be picked for Monday night because there is uh, there there's a lot of football to be played in the meantime. But at, cl at club level, at club, at, at yeah. club level, yeah, and I mean there'll be a couple of in, whether we're in the playoffs or whether we're um, we've already qualified, we will have a couple of internationals in March as well. So, yeah. and if if we're in the Euros, I'm sure we'll have a couple in late May, early June as well. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I, as I said, I, I want Josh Cullen to play, but it's going to be Glenn Wheel. Um, so we're going to have Glenn in, in the little image here, uh, yeah, popping yeah. up, um, and in front of him, and this is kind of a, a tricky one. Because Howrahan and Hendrick have had numerous um, chances to impress 
I didn't think that they'd done themselves uh, justice in the last two games, um, Georgia and Switzerland. I thought, you know, yeah, no, it, for I, their I, own I, sake, you know, they, they kind of left the door open for them to be abused by the public, and they did get abused by the public, unfortunately, and, and Howard Hill ended up getting dropped. Yeah, and Alan Brown came you know, in, so. yeah. Um, you'd wonder what Mick's thinking going, going yeah, into Yeah, I, I think Jeff Hendrick will definitely start. Yeah, I think Jeff will play. I, I think probably one of the few places that's up for discussion or we're not sure about, I suppose, is Aurahan or Brown. Um, and Brown did start in Switzerland. I, I think the fact that he went... Did Howard and play at all in Switzerland? I don't think he did. So... I can't remember now. I can't remember whether he came off. Head. Yeah, he didn't start whether he came off the bench yeah. or not. He came off the bench against New Zealand, though. Yeah, and uh, but Brown started against New Zealand. And I yeah. wonder is that in mixed thinking? Is that, I mean, by, by not starting against New Zealand? Well, one, they, one, one of the guys in the press conference today like, kind of ratted Alan Brown out and said that he was carrying a toy ha- hamstring, and that Alex Neil said he needs to be managed. So I think that might answer our question there. So I think it'll be Howard. Well, if he was starting with, it, if he's carrying a tight, tight hamstring, I think yeah, he's not. He he wouldn't have been risked against New Zealand if he was going to be starting. So it probably will be our. I I, I kind of am expecting Conor Horahan to start. Yeah. And and I'm going back to another thing I keep going on about. And sorry if I'm repeating myself, but absolutely crucial set piece delivery, and whether we have Robbie Brady or not, and I think probably not starting. Then we, I think Conor Horahan gives us more, is better delivery from a set piece, and that might just swing it. Yeah, um, as I say, I like Horahan and I like Hendrick. I just wish that um, maybe in this game that they get a foothold on the ball and just try and get their pass a bit more crisper and um, you know get themselves a little bit more credit. I mean, you can't have that many caps for your country and be bad. And that's the same with Glen Whelan. Like no, no, they're they're good players, but I mean, okay, yeah. they're not world beaters, but they are, and they they also give everything in an Irish short. You can't question their commitment. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I think that's the settle. So far, we've got Randolph, um, Doherty, Egan, Duffy, and Ennis Stevens, and then you got Whelan, Howard, and Hendrick in midfield. Then, if you're going on the left, I think if you're going by what you said earlier on about having players work up and down for you, I think James McLean is the obvious choice there. Whether he brings the the quality in the final third, I would debate highly at this moment in time. Um, I think the James McLean we have now is not the James McLean that we had in the last campaign. No, but he was the standout player in the last campaign. Yeah, um, that's what I mean. But yeah, no, he's not, and he's not the same. Um, I, I think he will start. Um, possibly another player who could come under a lot of pressure if we were to qualify. But uh, and James does work so hard, and it will be crucial to help out, and uh, more so even for his defensive work and the amount of energy he brings brings to a game. And another man that really wants, I, I know how hard he wants to get to the Euros next summer, um, as they all do, as as all the players do. So yeah, I think it will be James on the left. I just want to counteract that. Is if you were picking a team. Sean Maguire's performance the other night. Would you put him in contention? I I put Sean Maguire in contention, but if I was picking the team, I would start James. If it's still nil nil, if we're chasing a game, possibly he'd be the person to, to take off. But then, if you go back to the Switzerland home game, his seventy minute performance, you probably was, I was one of the people saying he should have come off, and his last twenty minutes earned us the draw. Yeah, I mean he was superb in the last twenty minutes. Having had a poor seventy minutes, I thought before that. So, if he takes the cup final mentality and doesn't use the headless chicken mentality, then I'll be happy because I know when James McLean's on it, he can be a very effective player and he can be a very good player. But it's just we haven't seen enough of it. Whether that's the form affecting the club level, who knows? But it's poppy season in England right now, and that's usually when he plays his best. So. Well, yeah, and he 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 played very well. I mean, Stoke have a, okay, Stoke have been in a mess, right? But they have. a a new manager in Michael O'Neill they had a really good win away to Barnsley and James started and played and I believe played quite well so yeah. I think it's going to help he's going to come into an Irish camp that's buzzing look it's a, it's a huge game it is a cup final it's even bigger than a cup final because it's it's our chance to get to Euros at home so I, I, James is going to be up for this I've no 
Yeah. No concerns. Okay. Um, little bit concerned. I hope he doesn't lose the head. I mean, it could be easy for yeah. any of us to lose the head. That's what I meant about the head yeah. is shaking. We stuff. could all be screaming our heads off and lose our heads a bit on Monday night, but uh, yeah. it's obviously important for the players on the pitch to to keep a cool head as well because it's cool heads are going to prevail. Are going to prevail. Yeah. yeah. And the last thing we need is someone getting sent off. Oh yeah. Look, whatever whatever chance we have, we need yeah. we need to keep eleven on the pitch. And yeah. Yeah, and then if you're going on the right-hand side, I think you're looking at either Robbie Brady or Callum Robinson. I think Callum Robinson's in more, uh, he's got more of a chance of starting out on that right-hand side. Uh, yeah, I, I thought Callum Robinson did really well when he came on against New Zealand. And I even thought he, he got slated for his performance in Georgia and then didn't didn't feature against Switzerland because of that. I actually didn't think he was that bad. Um, he put in a couple of decent crosses in in the Georgia game as well. And again, he's pretty good form Sheffield United he's getting, not playing every week but he's playing quite a bit for Sheffield United so um, for me it would be Callum Robinson to start and I think the telling point as well was that Mick said it himself uh, Robbie Brady played the 90 minutes or he so against New Zealand and I think if Robbie was going to start uh, he probably would have been called ashore maybe after the hour yeah I think well, as well as that, you look at uh, Robinson would be coming in there with a goal under his belt at the Aviva, which psychologically, again, I go back to, is something that's a real, a real positive going into this game. And the fact is now that Collins has scored, Maguire has scored, um, Didzy scored, and now Robinson has scored. So four of our strikers, I know uh, he might be playing out wide, but they've scored yeah, but now. Still the front they've players. got the goals. Was, yeah. There was a caps were building up. Goals just yeah, went. It is nice to get the monkey off the back. Yeah. And and you're talking about the strikers. I said the, I said the duck off the back okay. to, to Sean. <laughs> yeah. But Oops. you're talking about the strikers and crucial goals as well. Don't forget, I mean, going back a couple of years, but James McLean got two absolutely crucial goals. Not, not in the Aviva, but away to Wales and away to Austria. And uh, so he could be the man to, to score the goal. And it probably will be a goal if we were going to... Yeah. If we're going to go to the Euros. Yeah, and then a man who has been a huge loss up top, David McGaldry, don't there's any yeah. argument about no. this whatsoever. We've wanted him wrapped in cotton wool, robbed of his first Premier League goal last week um, against Spurs. But I just think he brings a different dimension to our game that not any, not many of our other strikers can bring, if any. Um, he's the only one who seems to be able to control the ball, uh, hold it up bring others into play yeah. whereas I look at I look at other players and I'm like you know you're not you're not doing enough in comparison to what he has that going. little touch of class and that bit of quality that yeah you can and Mick likes him as you said as well so yeah David McGoldrick is going to start yeah well I think that's that's the starting 11 uh, that we think I suppose Mick's going to go with uh, whether it's what we agree with or not I don't think is is, is in question he'll know best uh, that's what he's paid to do yeah, the one, I mean, who might have made it more of a difficult decision is Aaron Connolly. Had he been fit and available, would he have started on the left or, or possibly on the right? Would have been interesting if he had got on against New Zealand to yeah. try and maybe get that goal. Um, but that's the thing. It's good, healthy competition, as Sean McGuire said. So, look, as long as we have players scoring goals, um, that's good because not too long ago we couldn't even get out of our own half for many games. So... I'm just happy. Look, I'd be happy to to get a a one nil win, as we said in the oh, preview. Um, just, just get there, just yeah. win. So we'll just, just recapture the team. Then it's Randolph and Gall, Doherty, Egan, Duffy, Stevens, Whelan, Howran, Hendrick, um, McLean, McGoldrick, and uh, Callum Robinson. Robinson. Um, I think it's it, it, I think it's a it's a safe team, um, just to give us that first hour and see how we're doing, and then it'll be. Maybe George or or maybe Paris or you never know who he could bring on. Yeah, I, I think if we're chasing a game, I think we'll see Alan Judge. He played really well in Copenhagen, and I think he'll just bring that little bit of quality, that final pass, etc. He can set up a chance. Mm. So I think we'll see Alan Judge. I'm not sure. Maybe Shawnee McGuire, his goal and yeah, the way Shawnee, he finished sorry, yeah. the game, he could well. We could well see him on the pitch as well. Uh, maybe we'll see Josh Cullen for Glenn Whelan at some stage in the game. If I mean, Glenn's going to have to work, and he will work really hard on Monday. Yeah. 
Well, I think that's it. Um, let us know your thoughts. Who would who would you have start against um, Denmark? I know people calling for Jack Byrne and, and the likes. I know that um, a lot of people been calling for him online. But uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, don't forget to like the video because it helps the channel grow. We'll speak to you guys soon. Thanks for watching.